Hey y'all, welcome to, or welcome back to my channel, Scotty Cherie Reads. Today is gonna be a fun video. It's one of my favorites to watch and I'm very excited to actually take part of it this year. And that is the infamous mid-year book freakout tag. So grab a drink, I have my coffee here, and let's get right into it. So to start, I do wanna say that I, I'm only mentioning books that I've read up to the end of June because that's technically halfway through the year. I know a lot of people put these out at random times. Mine's a little late because it's towards the end of July. However, I'm only going to talk about the 32 books that I read from January to the end of June. So with that being said, let's start with the first question, which is a banger, and that is... Best books you've read so far this year. I guess I should say the best book you read th so far this year, but knowing me, I'm indecisive and I can't just pick one. So I'm happy to have a couple of contenders. And those books are Little Rot by Akweke Mezi, The Reformatory by Tanada Vridu, and A Little Devil in America by Hanif Abdurkib. I can't pick one. All three of these books, I just can't stop thinking about. We can start with The Reformatory, which wasn't actually a five-star read, which is funny. I think I gave it a four or 4.5. However, this book just lives in my brain, and I don't know if I'm gonna adjust it to a five-star read or what, but the conversations that I've had after reading this book, I've pushed it to so many people to read and they've read it and loved it. And it was just really, really good. And when I dove into the Dozier School of Boys, which this is in reference to, I just went down a rabbit hole about that terrible reformatory school. And it just took over my life for a little bit. So I feel like that has to be a favorite for me. I've talked a lot about Little Devil in America, which is a nonfiction about black performance. Hanif Abderbkiv can't do any wrong just pick it up it's so good his writing is out of this world great and then little rot which is i just read i think that was the last book that i read in june was one of my favorites as well a quick and mezzi can do no wrong in my eyes their works are very unique i don't know anyone that writes the way that they write and hits hard-hitting topics that are basically like taboo even though we know that some of this shit does happen in the real world i love that they don't shy away from writing about the darkness that does exist in our real world and i love that so yeah those are the three we'll see at the end of the year which one is gonna take number one so let's get into the second question the second question is what's the worst book you've read so far this year so we start out with the best and then the worst and easily hands down it was murder road by simone st james that book i gave it two stars i think but realistically it should be a one star it was ass I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was just bad. Like the writing was bad. The story had so many plot holes. There was this paranormal element that didn't make any sense. It was just a bad thriller. And I feel like I can read popcorn thrillers and stuff. And I feel like my expectation in terms of like the writing and how moving it's gonna be, I can kind of put that to the side and just have fun with thrillers. So for me to say that that was just a waste of my time and I was like upset that I didn't DNA enough that book that shows like how bad that book was i talk about it in a previous video that i'll have linked up here i also mentioned that there's other people on the internet that feel the same way <laughs> katie from katie colson had a whole rant video about it and i still laugh at that video to this day because it, it was just really bad and she can it's like a two hour at least an hour long vlog about her ranting about that book but it's awful so if you see that around, I do not recommend that book whatsoever. Honestly, I'm like kind of turned off by Simone St. James in general. Some people have suggested a couple other books that I'll put here I can't remember right now, but I just really don't think that it's gonna, she's gonna be the one for me. So that was by far the worst book of the year. All right, the third question is best sequel you've read so far this year. 
And looking back at my stats, I realized that I haven't read a lot of fantasy at all this year. And fantasy is one of my favorite genres, like top two or three for sure. But I haven't picked them up for some reason. And generally sequels are going to come with like sci-fi fantasy books and not so much like lit fic or contemporary. So the only thing that I have that I really liked is part of the Wayward Children series. Like I said, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm shameful that that vlog hasn't come out yet, but I promise it'll come out in August. But the one that I like the most so far is Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which is Jack and Jill's story. It's the second one in this universe. And Jack and Jill are some of my favorite characters. I am now in the fifth book come tumbling down, which is part of their story as well. And I'm just starting it, but still so far out of these books, Jack and Jill's story, Down Among the Six and Bones has been my favorite. The fourth question is, what's a new release that you haven't read yet, but you want to? So I have two for this. I'm kicking myself because at the beginning of the year, I read Kennedy Ryan's Before I Let Go, and I really loved that book. And it kind of got me into a little bit of a romance era, well, I haven't read a lot of romance, but it was a book that made me feel like I can't say that I don't like romance because for a long time I would say, oh, I don't read romance. It's like the one genre I don't read. However, Kennedy Ryan has changed that. Another book that's in this series, it's a companion series, is This Could Be Us that came out earlier this year. I picked it up right away. I'll link the vlog when I read the first Kennedy Ryan book and I went and picked it up as soon as it was released and I still haven't picked it up yet. I don't know what's wrong with me. I've just had a lot of other TBR stuff going on and I just haven't put it on there. So I'm hoping to pick that up, especially in the summer. Like right now is a perfect time to read Kennedy Ryan romance. So hopefully I can pick that one up. And then a second one for this question, I just picked up James by Percival Everett. And I'm hoping to do a vlog in the next couple months where I reread Huckleberry Finn, which I did read in high school, like freshman or sophomore year of high school. And it's time to revisit it. And then James is a retelling of of that story from James, a character in the first one who's the black male slave in that story from his perspective. So I'm very eager to pick that up. Percival Everett has other books out and I've heard that he's a great writer. So I'm curious to do that comparison and get into Percival's work. So look out for that vlog in the next couple months. All right, the fifth question will be pretty quick. It's most anticipated read for the second half of the year. So this year, for some reason, I haven't really been keeping up with new releases that are coming out. So I don't have an answer for this. I didn't want to just like look up something just to pull something out of my ass for this question. I'm just being real that I don't really have anything else coming out that I know of. The only thing that I know that's coming out that's a big anticipated release for most people is the fifth Brandon Sanderson book. I don't even know what it's called. I'll put it up here. But I haven't even started the Stormlight Archive yet, and hopefully I will start that this year. That's the plan, because this is the first part of a 10 book series, so the first arc of the first five will be finished this year, and I feel like now that that's at a stopping point, I can start reading them and I won't have to wait like everybody else for years to, well, actually, let me not say that because Brandon Sanderson writes really quickly, but I won't have to wait at all. So if I want to binge all five, which I probably won't do because they're over a thousand page books, I can. So that's the only anticipated release that I know of. The only one that I had my eye on was Little Rot, which already came out and I read. So don't really know anything else the rest of the year that's coming out. If you do know some and you think that they, it would be a good fit for me, leave them in the comments below because I'm always looking for new anticipated releases that you guys like and think would be a good fit for me. All right, number six is the biggest disappointment so far this year. And I'm sorry to all the girlies out there who love this book, but Seven Days in June just did not vibe with me. And so many people told me to pick that book up, especially when I was going on my cruise earlier, I was looking for summer romances and Seven Days in June, Seven Days in June, Seven Days in June kept coming up. And when I finished it, I was just so frustrated. I think the problem was that people didn't tell me that it was kind of a hard hitting romance. I thought it was gonna be like fluffy and smutty, but it like wasn't. For my own personal reasons, I just don't think that the two characters were in a healthy relationship when they got together. And I just wasn't riding for those two. I feel like they weren't the best person for each other. And if that's how you feel about a romance book, then obviously it's gonna be a disappointment. So sorry to all y'all who love her, but I, I just couldn't do it. So yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> 
Question number seven is biggest surprise. So for me, people will probably be surprised because I like this author. However, I didn't think that I was going to love this book as much as I did. And that is talking about Brandy Sandy again. That's Trust of the Emerald Sea. So I really love Mistborn. I've read Elantris. Like I love Brandon Sanderson's writing style and I'm very eager, like I mentioned a few seconds ago, to get into the Stormlight Archive and more of his work because he has so many. However, I invested in the Secret Project books and Trust of the Emerald Sea was the first one. And it was pitched to me as Brandon Sanderson in a way that's similar to, oh my God, why can I not think of what it's called? that's similar to The Princess Bride. And sorry again, y'all, but I'm not a Princess Bride fan. I don't really like the humor. Like, it's just not my thing and it never has been. So I was like, I don't know. Like, if the humor and stuff is similar to that, it's not gonna be my thing. It's gonna feel corny. I also hadn't read a pirate story before, which this is. So it was all just new to me and I didn't think that I was going to love it. However, I, crush this book like it was so fun i'm now on the hunt for more pirate stories the way the humor was brought into this book he did it so well and that's something that i normally don't like i don't like humor in my books at all especially this like dry humor but it worked for me and i absolutely devoured it and loved it and i'm damn near wanting to reread it because that story i was just so immersed in that world like i haven't read many fantasy books but this one was fantastic where when i was listening to the audiobook or reading the book i was in that world and nothing else mattered and that's ultimately going to be one of my favorite books. I love that. So that was a surprise. Another book that I want to mention is Night Watching, which is a thriller. It is a isolated thriller where there's like a home invasion and the mother and her two kids are hiding in the house and it's kind of play by play and it starts off hard hitting. I knew it was going to be interesting and fascinating and it was going to be a quick read, but I was invested in this story a lot more than I thought I was going to be. Like I gave it like a 4 or 4.5 out of st 5 stars and it's something that I think about and talk about a lot. I think it's a thriller that people should pick up. It, it was great. Some of the twists and turns I didn't really see coming. I liked the element of the kind of psychological thriller side of things of like is this mom, you're in the mom's head and it's like okay are these things real or is she making it up which is typical for any woman in a in a thriller role. However, this one was done really, really well. So very surprised that I love that more than just like an average read. It is ultimately one of my favorites so far this year. Question number eight is favorite new author. It can be a debut author or author that's new to you. I have two for this again. I'm gonna bring up Kennedy Ryan. Like I said, she's gonna be one of my favorites because she introduced me to a genre that I didn't think that I would like and she changed that for me. So definitely new favorite. Can't wait to pick up other books by her. And then another one is Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya who wrote Chain Gang All-Stars and Friday Black. Kind of a little bit of a spoiler, but I finished Friday Black in July and really liked that short story collection as well. I read Chain Gang All-Stars earlier this year and I really liked it. It's one that I suggest for a lot of people. There's a lot of good conversations that can be had from that book, which is kind of a dystopian future where prison inmates can opt in to this like sporting event that's kind of gladiator style where they're on these teams and they can fight to the death in order to try to gain their own freedom. And it's televised, kind of like the Super Bowl, and there's a lot of money that's in this sport. And that's pretty much what that book's about. And it was really, really good. I think Nana Kwame has a lot of big picture ideas and tries to explain like the black experience, the poor experience. He brings classism and to hear capitalism is a big thing that he talks about in both of his books. And I can't wait to see what else he writes. So he's going to be an autobi author for me. And I am very eager to see what the next book is that he comes out with. Question nine will be a quick one. It is the newest fictional crush. And I'm sorry, but I don't really have fictional crushes. It's not really a thing that works for me. I mean, I just don't get invested in love interest characters in that regard. So I don't have an answer for that one. However, question number 10 is newest favorite character. And I can give you an answer for that. 
So Juan is Sula. So I'm rereading Toni Morrison's books currently. And Sula was the second one that I read earlier this year. And it was a reread from high school or maybe it was college. I can't remember. I've read it before. This is my this is my second time reading it. And I remember the first time I really didn't like Sula. Like she's kind of an unlikable character. But now being older, I see the purpose for it and really like the energy that Sula brings in terms of being an independent woman. So Sula surprisingly became one of my favorite characters. And then obviously I read all of Heartstopper for June. I'll put the vlog up here, but Nick and Charlie are some of the cutest characters and I root for them and they're so cute. So Nick and Charlie are some of my favorites as well. Question 11 is a book that made you cry. And that one is Hereafter by Amy Lynn. That is a nonfiction book where she writes in vignettes explaining her journey from when her husband, like newlywed husband, I don't think they were married for a year yet, passes away unexpectedly and how she discovered that got through the process and kind of afterwards a few years later and it was really good uh obviously it's a hard-hitting topic it's very intimate the way that she wrote was really brave in order to share her story and to try to help other people out and make others feel like they're not alone like other widows and such but it was great writing was awesome and i definitely shed a tear for sure question number 12 is a book that made you happy so really quickly, I'm going to say another Kennedy Ryan before I let go. That one made me really happy. And the Heart Supper series is always going to be a go-to for me. Anytime I'm feeling down, I'll pick that up and Nick and Charlie can brighten my mood. So those are the two books for that question. Question number 13 is most beautiful book you acquired this year. So as you can tell, I'm kind of cheating, but I have gained a lot of the Penguin Clothbound classic editions. These are all the ones that I own so far, and I just love these. I've picked some up for my travels. I've had some for gifts, but yeah, I just wanted to shout out this collection that I'm collecting, and they're just gorgeous, and they're the best, and I can't wait to collect them all, hopefully. <laughs> Question number 14 is favorite book to movie adaptation so far this year. So I believe I've only read one and I actually really like that adaptation and that was for Black Cake. So I read that book and then there's a Hulu TV series and I ate that shit up. I finished that whole series in like a day or two and I think it did a really good job. The book was good, but honestly like, I may have liked the TV adaptation a little bit better. I don't know. I feel like it's just a book that was made for screen and Hulu did a great job with it. So that's definitely my favorite. Even though it's the only one, it's one that I really suggest. And maybe the TV series is better than the book. I didn't say it though. <laughs> and the last question is, what books do you need to read before the end of the year? So everyone hates this question because the answer really is like, all of them. I have over 500 books here. I don't know what the ratio is for ones that I've read and haven't read, but there's books coming out every week and the TBR is only growing and growing and growing. Like I said, I want to start the Way of Kings. I want to start the Storm My Archive, so start Way of Kings at least this year and finish that one. This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan is one that I really need to pick up. I want to read more of Aquake and Mezzi. So I have You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And that one's like marketed as a romance too. So I'm interested to see how I feel about that one. I love that Aquake writes in so many different genres, but romance should be interesting from them. I want to reread The Iliad and the Odyssey, which I have in the Penguin Clothbound Classics now, but I want to read those so it's fresh in my brain before going into some of the big Greek retellings like Song of Achilles, like what else do I have? Ariadne, Circe, all of those that are coming out. I want to revisit the original text before going into those. I know you don't have to, but that's just kind of my brain and what I want to do. So kind of wanting to get into that. And then lastly, I can't believe that I haven't read this book yet, but it's Hanaf Abderkhib's new book. I'm trying to think it, it's something about Ascension. I don't know, it's related to basketball, which also doesn't sound like anything that I would generally like. But like I said, anything that he writes, I'm picking up. So I want to pick that up before the end of the year. All right, y'all, that's it. 
that's all. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry this is a little bit late. Hopefully you're not completely burnt out on this tag from so many other creators, but it's a fun one and gives you a recap of how my year's going so far. I'm very far into my Goodreads challenge. I think I am at 40 something books now, which my goal was 50. So we'll see at the end of the year what that number or where that number is. I think it's a great re reading year so far and that's all. Let me know what your best and worst books are so far this year. Other than that, if you like the video, as always, it helps me out if you like, comment, and or subscribe. I would really appreciate it. See ya. Bye.